The transfer window is done and dusted. And it is everybody's favorite time of the year again. The Premier League season starts probably a couple of hours from when you're watching this video. So, I thought I would throw out my thoughts on what's going to happen for the upcoming Premier League season. It is a Premier League predictions video. G'day guys, how's it going? It is Jared HD here. Welcome to a different sort of video. This is my second ever predictions video, if I am being correct. I did one for the World Cup in Russia. And I mean, some of that was very questionable, some of that actually happened. I am backing Brazil to be the 2018 FIFA World Cup champions in Russia. Wrong. But we're going to try our hand with the Premier League. I am personally the most excited I have been for a Premier League season in years. Of course, a lot of you would know if you've been following me for quite some time. And if you followed me on Twitter and Instagram, shameless plug that. I am a massive Fulham fan. We won the playoff final against Aston Villa. We're in the Premier League. We have spent over a hundred million pounds. So personally, I'm pretty excited to watch every Fulham game this season. But overall, I think it's going to be one of the most competitive Premier League seasons in years. And I had a really tough time figuring out some of these spots. Some of the spots in the table, I just went, yep, right, that's who's going to go there. But some of them, I literally was sitting here for an hour, an hour and a half doing research, looking up stats, looking up ridiculous stuff like that. So hopefully it's a good prediction, but of course you can never get these 100% right. Although we'll test that out at the end of the season. But if you guys do go on to enjoy today's video, make sure you leave a like on it. Really want to do a lot more of these in real life discussion videos but if you are new around here make sure you bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button down below so I've gone ahead and got my Chicago White Sox cap even though I'm a Red Sox fan but I've cut up all 20 Premier League teams I'm not going to be doing it in order from top to bottom or bottom to top I'm going to be pulling out a team out of the hat discussing them throwing them up on the table so I'm not looking the first team we're going to be talking about is going to be oh a big one Chelsea. Also, I can tell you you can't see that in focus, but Chelsea is the first team we're going to be talking about. Good to see we're starting things off with a controversial one because Chelsea was one of these sides that I really had to do a lot of research in. They have bought a lot of quality talent. You've got Jorginho. You've got Kepa, the new goalkeeper. I'm very excited to see how he does. You've got Kovacic. Uh, you've got a lot of big players that could either perform amazingly or they could do what Alvaro Morata did last season and just flop completely. And that is the big question mark on why I have put Chelsea where I have. At times, I had them sitting third, fourth. Other times, I was like, oh, they're going to go absolutely terrible. Sarri's going to get sacked. They're going to finish eighth. But ultimately, I came to the decision that Chelsea are going to finish sixth this season. This is a prediction that I am not super confident on, Chelsea finishing sixth, but that's where I've got them at the moment. All right, so team number two. Okay, another one that a lot of people will probably want to know about. You can't see it, but it is going to be Wolves. I think Wolves are a side that virtually every Premier League fan is excited to see play this season. A lot of transfer business from them. Uh, behind Fulham as one of the biggest senders in this transfer window. Of course, we all know about the Portuguese influence. I'm not going to make some cheap joke about them being a Portuguese side, but... Uh, some very big business. Rui Patricio, I am so excited to see how he performs in the Premier League. Of course, a Euro 2016 winner with Portugal. You've also got João Moutinho, Ruben Neves as well, another big player I'm excited to see about. They've just gone ahead and bought a lot of quality talent and they were a side that I had around that middle of the range. I saw some YouTubers have put them in Europa League spots or even pushing for Champions League. I have decided to put Wolves in ninth position. I don't think they're going to make a run for top six, top, se top seven, but I don't think they're going to be in trouble of a relegation battle. All right, so the next team is going to be Huddersfield. Of course, Huddersfield are a side that I have a soft spot for. Aaron Moy, the Australian legend, former Western Sydney Wanderers star. Uh, he is, of course, one of Huddersfield's top players, but unfortunately, as much as it hurts me to say this, I think Huddersfield are in for a really tough season. They've done a little bit of improvement over the off-season, but 
I don't think it's going to be enough for them to compete with a lot of the other sides. I think they're going to suffer from second year syndrome. And I think this is going to be the season that Huddersfield go back down. I think the Terriers are going to finish in 19th position. Again, this was a decision I was pretty comfortable on. I feel like Huddersfield and another side that you'll soon find out are going to really struggle this year. But for the sake of Aaron Moy, I hope they don't get relegated. But... Second year syndrome, Huddersfield, 19. All right, who do we have now? Okay, we have Burnley. Burnley are the next team we're gonna talk about. Burnley are an interesting one. Of course, they shocked everyone. I think they were one of everybody's favorite teams to get relegated or at least be in that relegation battle last season. But they ended up qualifying for Europa League football. And honestly, whilst I don't think they're gonna be in the relegation battle again this season, I think they are gonna be Definitely not as good as they were last season, but I think they might struggle if they end up getting through to the Europa League. Right now, at the time of recording, they just had the first leg of one of their qualification games over in Turkey, a nil-all draw. Nil-nil, nil-all, whatever you call it. But I think the toll, if they do get through to the group stages of the Europa League, I think the toll of European football is going to really hurt them this season. I mean, it's the first time in, what, 50-something years that they've played European football and immediately, as soon as I knew Burnley were going to be playing Europa League football, it gave me flashbacks of what Newcastle United did a few seasons ago, where they qualify for the Europa League and they just don't have the squad depth or really the... Uh, what's the right word I'm looking for? They really just don't have the resources to compete competitively in both competitions. So I feel like Burnley, it would make sense for them to go hard at the Europa League. And once they eventually get... Uh, eliminated from that competition unless they go the whole way. I feel like that's when they'll really go hard in the Premier League, but they haven't done a heap of transfer business. They did uh, sign Vidra and they signed Joe Hart and I feel like they signed another centre-back. That's right, they signed Ben Gibson, so a quality championship defender there played in the Premier League for Middlesbrough a few years ago, but is it going to be enough for Burnley to really bounce back after the Europa League? I don't think so. I have put Burnley in 11th position, but I could see them sliding even further down than that. All right, so we have pulled out my favorite side, Fulham. Now, obviously, I am over the moon with the amount of business Fulham have done. For the first time ever, we have the, we've been the first recently or newly promoted side to spend over £100 million in a transfer window, so... Yeah, we're going hard. I mean, last night we signed five players on deadline day. That is absolutely insane. And I honestly don't know what to expect this season. I feel like we could either finish like 10th, 9th, 10th, or we could really be in trouble. But because I feel like last season, everybody was going on. Like I saw similar responses about Stoke City that everybody had about Fulham this window. I remember seeing on Twitter and all around the media saying Stoke are gonna be like a mid-table side. They've made some great signings, safe from relegation, but we all know how that turned out for the Potters. Maybe that's just the skeptic in me feeling kind of nervous about Fulham just because I desperately want us to survive. I mean, I don't care if we finish in 17th. I don't care where we finish as long as it is not in those bottom three spots. But ultimately, I have erred on the side of caution. I have put us in 12th position. It's really going to come down to how we start off the season. I feel like we might get off to a slow start. A few of our players haven't played uh, Premier League football ever. They've been quality players in the championship. Young players as well. I mean, Sessignon, I am really excited to see how he does. Hasn't played in the Premier League before, but we know he is a talent for the future. Really hope he gets to show his worth. Not sure whether Yukanovic is going to play him in left mid, left back, left wing, because we've brought in Scherler, but last season, Scherler did play a lot of the season for Borussia Dortmund in striker, so I could easily see Scherler being put up front with Mitro, but we're going to have to wait and see. I'm sure tomorrow's game against Crystal Palace will be a big indication of that, but... Yeah, I'm nervous for this season, but I am unbelievably excited. Alright, the next side we're going to talk about is going to be Brighton. Now, there's a general group of sides, I would say, from about 14th position down to 19th position, uh, because I think the side I'm putting in 20th are going to get relegated no matter what. But 14th to 19th, those sides, I think, are all going to be battling it out for relegation. I think it's going to be one of the tightest relegation battles in years. I could definitely see the relegation battle this year coming down with multiple teams coming down to it on the final day. But Brighton were a side that I felt like 
could be in this group. And ultimately, I have put Brighton in 18th position, and I predict them to also suffer from second year syndrome along with Huddersfield and get relegated. But I feel like they could also just get themselves out of it. I mean, this was another side that I have put in and out of the relegation zone in my mind and through my notes numerous times. I don't know if they're going to survive. I don't know if they're going to just get out of there, but I think it's going to be a really, really tough season for Brighton fans. And I mean, as an Aussie, I already spoke about Aaron Moy, Matty Ryan in between the sticks. I want him playing Premier League football, but I don't know if Brighton are going to be able to step up and keep themselves in the Premier League. All right, so the next side we're going to be talking about, you probably can't even see these notes, but the next side is going to be Watford. Now, Watford are another side that I would group into this with Brighton and Huddersfield, like that 13th to 19th spot. Watford, I had them in the relegation zone at one point. I think they're going to really struggle, but ultimately, I think they have too much quality on the park to get relegated. I'm very interested to see how Delafay is going to do this season. I think he might, per I personally think he might be the difference between survival and relegation for Watford. I mean, they're sold to Charleston, 50 million pounds. What they're going to use that money for, I don't know. I'm pretty sure they didn't make any deadline day signings or no substantial deadline day signings. So I'm interested to see what they're going to do there. But ultimately, I have Watford only just missing out on relegation. I think they're going to really, really struggle this season. But I think they're going to finish in 17th position. All right, so I guess I'm getting the bottom half of the table all sorted out. We have Bournemouth up next, and they're another side that I don't know what to expect from them. They've kind of developed the, I don't know, the mantra of what we're seeing from Southampton. When Southampton first got into the Premier League, everybody really got a soft spot for them. They survived, they uh, prospered, really. They thrived in the Premier League, and... Bournemouth have been doing that for the past few seasons. When they first got promoted, I thought Eddie Howe's men were going to be in real big trouble of going straight back down, but their first season in the Premier League was class. I think this is now their third straight season in the Premier League, and I think they're going to survive, but I think it's going to be a tough season. They're the type of side that I could see sliding really down in this table and having a really tough run this season. And for that reason, I have gone for Bournemouth in 15th position. This is cutting edge analysis, guys. Cutting edge analysis. Get me a job at Fox Sports or Sky Sports. Okay, so we're going to be getting into a very interesting side for this season. Another side that I'm sure a lot of Premier League fans are wanting to see this season. It is going to be West Ham United. I think we can all agree that West Ham are up there this season with the best transfer business in the season. I mean, they had a really good season last year in terms of transfer business. We said, what, Chicharito, Joe Hart. Who else did they sign? They signed other players, but um, everybody was really, really excited with what West Ham would do. Arnautovic, that's the man. Um, everybody was really excited to see what West Ham would do, but they really struggled for a lot of last season. We saw all the crazy scenes at the Olympic Stadium. We saw the fans protesting in front of the owners uh, against Burnley. It was just a crazy season for West Ham. They really struggled. They, I think they're still struggling to adapt to the Olympic Stadium. It just doesn't have the same feel that Upton Park had. Uh, but I think West Ham are going to have a great season this season. I think they're going to be knocking on the door of Europa League football. And they're really going to give a lot of the top five, top four, top six teams a really tough run this season. Give them a good run for their money. And for that reason, I have put West Ham United in seventh position. They're going to be a side that I'm excited to watch play all season. Okay, so I'm sure a lot of you guys have been waiting for this. We have... Manchester United. The Red Devils are an interesting one. I feel like Mourinho is either going to have an incredible season that's going to see them get Champions League football again, really have a good run at City for the title and Liverpool for the title and all these big teams for the title. But do I think they're going to be able to do that? I don't know. Mourinho seems to be losing the dressing room a little bit now. And a bit of a theme has been established if you look back at Mourinho's past where he's Lost the, lost the locker room with Chelsea, with Real Madrid, around this third season mark. And some of the crap he's been doing in preseason really would not fill me with confidence if I was a Manchester United fan. I'm going to talk about it at the end of the video, but I'm going to be doing predictions for uh, Golden Boot, Player of the Year, and First Manager Sack. But I'm just going to say it right now. I think... Mourinho is a bit of a wild card to be the first manager sacked this season. I don't think he's going to leave in the first 
what, 10, 15 games, but I feel like come Christmas time, he could be in big strife. But that's going to come down to how the players perform for him. Will Pogba step up? Will Pogba have a really solid season? He's just won the World Cup with France. Will he be able to deliver on the park for Manchester United? Will Lukaku be able to bag 30 goals a season like he did at Everton a few seasons ago? These are all very difficult questions. Is Martial going to have more of a breakout here? Of course, he's been a little bit out of favour with Manchester United and with uh, Jose Mourinho, so I'm very interested to see how he does there. David De Gea, you would assume is going to be ever reliable in between the sticks, but ultimately, Manchester United are a side that I have put in third position for this Premier League season, but I could easily see them having a shocker, se shocker of a season and slipping out of the top four, finishing maybe fifth at worst. All right, changing pace and going back down to one of the clubs that might be in bitter strife. It is going to be Southampton, another club that I think Mark Hughes could be in big strife this season. Southampton had a shocker of a season last year. I did not expect them to do that bad. And yesterday, when I was writing out my predictions, when I was doing a lot of my planning, this was before deadline day, I actually had Southampton in the relegation zone. But I think Danny Ings might be a saving grace for them this season. I was struggling to find out, struggling to think where the goals were going to come from. But I feel like the £20 million signing of Danny Ings might be a survival, like a survival move for Southampton. I think that might be a big difference for them between being relegated and staying up in the Premier League. But ultimately, I have led the Saints, or I put the Saints into 16th position. I think they're going to survive by the skin of their teeth, but I don't think they'll be as bad as they were last season. Although, I mean, if I put them in 16th, that probably is as bad as they were last season. All right, we're coming down to the final few sides. And we are going to talk about a side that I'm sure a lot of people are interested to find out where they're going to be. It is going to be Everton. The blue half of the Mersey side. It's going to be interesting to see where they finish this season. Richarlison is a big talking point. Of course, a lot of money spent on him. Will he step up and deliver for the Toffees? Or will he be a massive flop of a signing? I feel like it was a good move to bring him in from Everton. The price tag is questionable. But personally, I don't pay a massive amount of notice when it comes to transfer sums. I feel like in modern day football, the money just keeps coming and coming and it won't stop coming. But um, I think Everton, I don't know, it's interesting. I have put them in eighth position, but again, they could drop down a few positions. They could push up a few positions. Ultimately though, I think Everton are going to finish in eighth. Jordan Pickford coming off a world-class World Cup there for England. He was insane and I think he was probably the biggest reason why England got to the semi-finals. If he can transfer that form over to Everton, I think that's going to make a massive difference. Of course, they're going to be pushing for Europa League football, but I think they'll finish in eighth. All right, so the next team we're going to be talking about is going to be Fulham's opponents on match day one. It is going to be Crystal Palace, and as a Palace... I don't know. As a Palace fan, you would be very interested to see how they're going to do this season. A lot of people have said they're going to struggle, but personally, I think they're going to do really well. I think it's a massive move that they've held on to Wilfred Zaha. He has been incredible. I know Spurs were coming in for him. I know uh, there's a lot of clubs that wanted him, but they've held on to him, Crystal Palace, and I feel like he's going to have another incredible season. Maximilian Meyer on a free transfer is out of this world business. I think Crystal Palace fans are in for a very good season. I mean, I have a lot of love for Woy, Woy Hodgson as a manager. He did incredible bits for them last season. When he took over at the start of the season, I think a lot of people, including myself, thought, what's he going to do? Crystal Palace are just abysmal. I mean, they went, how many, they went like a few weeks at least, or like a month of football, a long, long time from memory, without scoring a goal. It was embarrassing to watch. And they were, they were nailed in to get relegated and somehow... Woy had an incredible season with them, kept them up, and now I think they're going to go from strength to strength here. And I think Woy, who is an incredible man, I mean, he got Fulham to the Europa League finals, so I've got a lot of love for Woy, but I think Crystal Palace are going to finish in 10th position. That is a bold move in my opinion, but I think Palace are in for a very good season. All right, traveling north for the next prediction, and it is going to be Newcastle United. And personally, I think Newcastle are in for a very, very rough season here. I don't think they're going to get relegated, but I think they're going to be right in the, the battle. They've spent 
not too much money this transfer window. I think they had, I saw a stat, I think it was they had the best profit, net profit out of every Premier League club this window, which is, yeah, kind of odd considering the window we just saw. I mean, we all know what we're seeing in the news about Rafa and Mike Ashley. Mike Ashley not willing to spend the big bucks. Rafa, whilst I don't think he's going to get sacked, I think he might be the first manager to go this season. Just few, from his behalf, though, like I think he will get up, pack his bags and leave because it's been quite frustrating for him, I can imagine. And I know a lot of Newcastle fans have been venting their frustration with the Ashleys or with Mike Ashley. But ultimately, I think Newcastle are going to survive just. They're another one of these teams that are going to be in that 14th to 19th range that could go down, but Newcastle, I have put them in 14th position. Alright, the next team we're going to be talking about is the team that, as soon as I wrote this, I went straight to 20th position and wrote them in. I don't think I've seen a single prediction where Cardiff City haven't been put in 20th position, but we're putting Cardiff City in 20th position. They haven't done an incredible amount of transfer business. They barely got promoted to the Premier League. I mean, they were so comfortable. Them and Wolves were like nailed on to get promoted. They absolutely crumbled and we almost took them out of the automatic spot. But yeah, Neil Warnock, he's a great championship manager. Don't know if he's a pr great Premier League manager. I don't think he's gonna do bits for them. I think Cardiff City, Easiest pick, nailed in to get relegated. Alright, so the next team we're going to be talking about is one that, again, I found very hard to find a position for them in the table. It is going to be Tottenham. Of course, Tottenham didn't pick up a single player in this transfer window. And I know a lot of Spurs fans are quite pissed off about that. Uh, and I don't know if it's going to really hurt them too much. I mean, they've got a very good squad, but... I don't think they're going to challenge the title. I think they're going to have a worse season than last. And ultimately, I have put Tottenham in fifth position. But again, if Harry Kane's firing, if Deli Ali's firing, if Ericsson's firing, I could easily see them getting up in that third spot. Uh, I don't think they're going to get into the top two, but I think Tottenham might be able to put on the pressure like they have in recent years. I mean, as I said, I think it's going to be one of the closest Premier League seasons. I feel like the top two I automatically knew uh, the bottom one, Cardiff, I automatically knew. And then probably about third to seventh, I was so conflicted on. Eighth to thirteenth, I was conflicted on. And then 14th to 19th, I was so conflicted on. So Tottenham, fifth position. I'm interested to see how they do. I mean, it makes sense. Pochettino's come out and said, I didn't make any signings because I'm already happy with the side I have, which is either going to come to be a tactical mask stroke or just an incredible cop-out dependent on what sort of a season they have. We're going to go now for their North London rivals and it is going to be Arsenal. It is going to be the Gunners. They are another side that I am very, very interested to see perform this season. Unai Emery into the club, new manager. Apparently the players are reinvigorated. They're ready to go for him. Uh, and I'm very excited to see Aubameyang get a full Premier League ca campaign under his belt. I'm interested to see how Ertil goes this season. Mkhitaryan, Lacazette, they've got Socrates in the back line. Lichsteiner at right back. Whether him or Bayern starts, I'm not too sure though because I feel like Lichsteiner has been brought in as kind of a mental move. He's a winner. He's won so many titles with Juventus. I feel like Arsenal needs a little bit of that winning mentality, like win at all cost mentality. And I think Arsenal, whilst they're not going to go incredible this season, I think they're going to do better than last. And I think we're going to see Arsenal back at their, I guess, memeable position of fourth. I think next season, we are. Re I'm really excited next season to see how Arsenal does. I think they're going to be incredible next season. This season, though, is going to build the pillars for what I think is going to be a brand new dynasty at the Emirates. The fairy tale team. Leicester City, they are the next team we're going to be talking about. And obviously, we've got three positions left. First, second, and 13th. And I'm going to put Leicester in first position. They're going to repeat the fairy tale. Obviously not. I'm putting Leicester in 13th. But again, they are the sort of side that I was conflicted with. I think they can finish in 10th, 11th, if they have a good start to the season. But Barra is gone. That's a big loss for them. Jamie Vardy's still there, but he's getting on in age now. Will he be able to bag those 20-plus goals a season like he has been? I'm not so sure. I hope so, because I love Jamie Vardy, but I'm not super confident. They've done some decent bits in the transfer window. Of course, James Madison from Norwich. Very interested to see how he makes the transition from the championship to the Premier League. They've got Ricardo Pereira. 
great right back there. They've got Johnny Evans as well, decent centre back there. Really cheap fee as well. I think it was like three and a half million for the Northern Irishman from West Brom. So very interested to see how Leicester do this season, but I feel like they're going to have a little bit of a drop off and they're going to go to 13th position. And it's actually worked out pretty well. The last two teams in the hat, Manchester City and Liverpool, are the teams that I think are going to finish either first or second. So, who are we going to talk about first? We're going to be talking about Manchester City. So, Manchester City, 100 points last season. Incredible. The Centurions, what a season they had. Pep Guardiola firing on all cylinders. And I think a lot of people will have Man City as even one of their Champions League favorites this season. I think City are going to have an incredible season. It's going to eclipse everything they have done. I think they're going to win a lot of trophies this year. And I think the Premier League is going to be one of them. Jesus, I tip him to have an incredible season. I tip him to become one of the best strikers in the world this season. And I have gone Manchester City to win the Premier League title. Not a ballsy move there, but the right one in my opinion. And that means Liverpool are going to be the final team in today's prediction video. Of course, Liverpool, I think they're going to finish in second season. But I think it is going to be a two-horse race this season. I think Liverpool are going to put an incredible amount of pressure onto Manchester City. And they could, they could cause a big upset here and win the Premier League title. An incredible transfer window from Jurgen Klopp. I mean, they've brought in a ridiculous amount of plays. You've got Allison, you've got Naby Keita, you've got Fabinho, you've got Zerlan Shakiri. I mean, you've got the incredible front line of Mohamed Salah, uh, Roberto Firmino, Sadio Mane. If they don't do bits, then you can just bring in Zerlan Shakiri off the bench. That is insane to think about. That depth is incredible, but... The Champions League runners-up, I think they're going to be Premier League runners-up, and I think they're going to finish in second position. So to polish off today's episode, we have to talk about the Golden Boot, the first manager to be sacked, and the player of the season. So, player of the season, I think it's going to be a Manchester City player. And I think it's going to be the man that almost won it last season, Kevin De Bruyne. I think he's going to eclipse Mo Salah and win the play player of the year, the PFA player of the year this season. He was incredible for Manchester City last year. Went deep in the World Cup with Belgium. And I think he's going to be firing on all cylinders come match day one through to 38. And I think Kevin De Bruyne is going to win the Player of the Year award. First manager to be sacked. I think it is going to be Mark Hughes from Southampton. I feel like the Saints might just get off to a slow start to the season. The board might lose their patience and try to steady the ship for the second half of the season. But like I said earlier... Jose Mourinho, definitely a good shout to be a wild card to be the first manager say. Now, the Golden Boot. This was an award that I have really thought a few times about. I have thought a lot about this award, and I had one guy nailed in here for a long time, so I thought I was going to easily win it, but ultimately, I have decided to change it. Now, originally, I had Harry Kane, but I don't think he's going to score as many goals as he has in previous years. I mean, he... He has been incredible uh, the past few seasons, but given that I've put Tottenham in, what, fifth position, I just can't see Harry Kane scoring enough goals and Tottenham finishing in fifth position for him to win the Golden Boot. So then I looked at Man City and I was like, I don't think anybody from Man City is going to win the Golden Boot because although I did say Jesus is going to be a star standout player this season, he's still got to compete with Sergio Aguero, who's going to get uh, the odd game here or there off the bench, and I don't think Jesus will play 90 minutes every week, unless of course Aguero gets injured, but then I looked at Arsenal, I thought maybe a Bomiang could do it, but ultimately I have made a really ballsy call here, I mean it might not be ballsy because he's an out and out striker and he's scored a lot of goals in the past, but I actually think Romelu Lukaku is going to have an incredible season, and I've put Romelu Lukaku to win the golden boot here. Again, I'm probably going to look back at this at the end of the season and either feel like Nostradamus or an absolute fool, but Romelu Lukaku is my personal pick to win the Golden Boot. So, fellas, that is going to conclude a very long video. I have rambled on a lot here, and if you're still listening, I appreciate you listening to my probably idiotic comments and my probably idiotic predictions, but we'll look at these at the end of the season, see how we went. I hope you guys are excited for the Premier League season to begin. I am very excited myself. But it has been Jared HD here. 
I hope you have a fantastic day. I am out. Peace.